Hello everyone, this is Sato from Satopin. Thank you for being here today. For those of you who don't know me, I make bookish videos and also vlogs in general because I'm a collector of memories. So I wanted to start a new series on my channel to make things exciting for a challenge for myself as well. So when I was little, as a child, a wee child, I used to love fantasy. I read, you know, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, um, Inked Spell all that stuff Aragon and I used to just adore fantasy and the magical world and all that um, and now as an adult I kind of read more non-fiction historical fiction kind of dark things thriller um, horror and so I just to oh hi there's Dobby <laughs> so recently I've been wanting to expand the range of genres that I read so I thought I want to get back into fantasy. So this is my new series on my channel where I am getting back into fantasy. This is episode one. I had to change my plan so many times because originally I wanted to start with Six of Crows which was recommended to me by Taylor but I found out it's a whole world um, because I have to start back from Shadow and Bone trilogy and then go to Six of Crows and then there's like another I don't know so it's too much for me this month just because I am reading a really big classic book right now Middle March by George Eliot so I decided to kind of do more research and it so happens that Carrie Can Read which is one of my favorite booktuber just posted a video where she recommends YA standalone fantasy books and what can I say? Perfect timing. So of course I had to click on it, watch it, make a list of all the books I want to read. And uh, great news, all the books that she recommends I have never heard of and there's no wait list in my library. I just picked one book last night that I want to start reading. which uh, And again, it's just a standalone, not a series, which is what I can handle right now. So <laughs> Carrie Can Read loves this book. She gushes about this book and she describes it as dark academia Howl's Moving Castle and that's all I needed to hear. I was like, okay, I'll read it. So this is the first book I'm gonna start reading to kind of delve back into the fantasy world. So it is called The Sorcery of Thorns. I keep thinking it's thrones, but it's thorns. It so happens that Scribd has it on their app. They've been killing it these days because they also have the Shadow and Bone trilogy on here. It's crazy. But I do prefer to read physical books, especially for fantasies because, you know, they tend to have a map in the beginning and I like to kind of look back and forth between them. Also, I have a really hard time concentrating digital, uh, reading digitally right now. Not a good time. So I'm going to start reading this on Scribe today. But I do have it on hold in the library and there's no wait list. I'm on the I'm the first person on the list. So I should get a notice today or tomorrow and I should be able to get the physical book. I'm very excited. We'll see. I don't really like the cover. It looks very cheesy. I don't know. That's how I feel about a lot of fantasy books. But we'll see. Because she gushes about them and I trust her reading tastes. I hope this is good. Today I do have a live stream that I'm joining today. Um, it's my second one and I'm very excited. Um, it's with Sandra from uh, Got A Thing For Things and, and Cecilia and Sarah. This is gonna be interesting. It's our first time like meeting each other and then we'll be like live streaming. So that is happening in less than an hour. Hopefully I get to read lots of Sorcery of Thorns. Yes, so this is a long intro from me. But I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I don't know what to expect, but welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And I'll see you in a bit. Bye. <laughs> Quick update, um, it is currently 5 p.m. in the evening and um, wow, sorry I'm kind of like fuzzy because we, uh, the live stream ended up being like 
five hours yeah because we went from no four and a half hours because we went from 12 to 4 30. um and yeah i felt very productive at the end i did read about 30 pages of middle march and then also i read 60 pages of sorcerer of thorns and then at the end i got a notification from the library saying that my book is on hold so wanted to quickly pick it up right now yay it is it's actually pretty in person the cover not bad so far i do think that things are happening quickly maybe because it is a standalone fantasy and that's great i don't like when things drag on too much and you know new characters popped up like really quickly and action scenes have happened someone has already died so yeah things are already like starting so it has been interesting and it's not it's not bad so i'm very happy about that yeah reading on the computer was kind of hard for me because or because i had to stream on the ipad so i was reading on reading on my computer and it was like really hard on my eyes so hopefully now that i have the physical book i can read more tonight and get to the 100 page mark we'll see Good morning friends! Quick reading update of Sorcerer of Thorns. Um, it is growing on me, although I am reading slower than I want to. I'm just having this like weird reading time right now. Reading, It's not like quite a reading slump, but I'm having... <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's not quite a reading slump, but it's just like been hard for me to concentrate on a book. But I do still read, it's not like I'm not reading at all. But just quick reading update. I do see the Howl, Wizard Howl's resemblance in this book. Nathaniel, he is like a sorcerer in the book and he just appeared closer to the beginning of the book. And he reminds me of Wizard Howl. He has black, long hair. And like, just like Wizard Howl, like he thinks he's handsome. Like he's like, um, what did he say? He said uh, he's the most eligible bachelor in the kingdom and he also said um, he's like a celebrity so he has to hide himself when he enters like the city. So yeah, it's it's quite funny. I do like that. I also am liking that it's not too hard to like get into this world. That's that's kind of what makes me like af not afraid but kind of timid about um, reading fantasy books but this one you can like enter it and you like learn it really quickly. Um, I love that there's weird demons um, around. It kind of reminds me of the anime I'm watching, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, yeah, just like weird demons popping up here and there and they fight it. So it kind of reminds me of the anime as well. So yeah, just lots of fun adventure things happening. I found this cold brew coffee at Target and I love it so much. I'm going to make some cold coffee and get more reading done this morning.
Good morning! It's really interesting because like I mentioned, I'm reading Middlemarch right now, which is like a classic um, written in the Victorian era. And in this book, women are thought of as just like a wife, like an ornament to have and just obey and do whatever the husband pleases kind of thing. And I love when I'm reading several books and then they happen to kind of have a connection with each other. And so it just so happens that when I'm reading Sorcery of Thorns, you know, I don't even know what year this would be set in, but it's interesting because, um, you know, women are wearing corsets and dresses. And Elizabeth just mentions to a doctor how she loves reading, and the doctor is like, oh, something's wrong with her. Um, her brain is like, I forgot what he was saying. He said, like, he need, she needs bed rest because she's read too many books, basically, is what he's saying. And <laughs> It's so ridiculous and then right now I just came to a line where it says She now understood that the world wasn't kind to young women Especially when they behaved in ways men didn't like and spoke truths that men weren't ready to hear <sighs> So yeah, it's just ridiculous that the two books I'm reading the women are thought of as less and yet We still have strong female characters in both of them that kind of scorns that idea and fights back against that idea so yes, that's my commentary right now. Um, I am almost halfway through and yes, um, I'm excited with Sorcery of Thorns because there's something bad or evil presence coming into the picture right now and that's when, you know, action picks up, like things pick up. So it's getting um, good. I feel like I say that in every update, it's getting good. <laughs> um, but it is and again, I'm just happy that I'm enjoying this read. So yes, talk to you later. Hello friends! I have finally completed The Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I don't know if you could tell by me grinning so big. Uh, I absolutely love this book. I'm so glad I started my Getting Back Into Fantasy series with this book. Um, again, thank you Carrie for recommending this book in your channel. I'm so glad I picked this. Oh my gosh. When I first started this fantasy book I was worried about like difficult terms that I want to understand and that's usually what kind of throws me off reading fantasy books but the only thing that got me confused was the word grimoire which are magical books but like I didn't get that until like I had to look it up on a wikipedia page and then I finally understood it but other than that like it's so easy to get into the world. Halfway through we do find out that this book is set in 1824 so that makes sense why she had to wear um, corsets and dresses and all that. It's so cool that there are magical libraries in this, books and, in this book and books that talk. Again, the grimoire. There are... how many libraries were there? 
They're called the Great Libraries and they're spread out around the kingdom. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six libraries and I imagine the Royal Library, which is like in the center of the kingdom, I imagine it kind of like Beauty and the Beast, the Beast's library when Belle walks in and there's like tons of books around the shelves. That's what I imagine. So it made me really happy because that's like my favorite scene in Beauty and the Beast. And I'm not going to give away too much. Again, this book, like Carrie describes it as Dark Academia, House Moving Castle. Um, again, Nathaniel Sorcerer does remind me of Wizard Hal. With his black hair and his grumpiness and how he's kind of vain about his looks. Um, love that the main character, Elizabeth, is a badass. She can fight with swords. She's not afraid to kind of jump into action and do what, the, do what she has to do. And I have to say, for a standalone fantasy that's only about 450 pages, I say that the pacing was really well done. Like, it was not rushed. Everything seemed like it didn't drag on. It wasn't rushed. It was like perfect pacing. Action scenes were described really well, detailed, so I could like actually picture in my head. And yeah, every twist and turn had me gasping. Like, you think that there would be like one like point where I'm like oh, and then it's over no it just keeps happening and you're like oh my gosh oh my gosh it's not it's still going on the action's still happening so it was just a roller coaster of emotion and one last thing Silas oh my god if you've read this book you understand Silas is Nathaniel's friend <laughs> I'm not gonna say more than that but he is oh my god he is my favorite character in this book and my heart uh, Silas <laughs> you should read it just for him honestly because he was the best character in this book more than Elizabeth more than Nathaniel Silas is like the MVP in this book yes <laughs> if you can't tell I am going to give this book five out of five stars uh, again, I'm just so happy that this book was so good and I'm excited to continue on my fantasy journey um, Let me know if you have recommendations for other fantasy books that you want me to try out If there's like a shorter series or just standalone, that'd be awesome But if you do have like a recommendation for a series that you really really think that I should read then please let me know in the comments below Yes, so thank you for being in this uh, journey with me and I will see you next time. Bye!